All right, welcome to Brian's at the Gate. This is our video blog for March 25th, 2019. I don't know if there's really anything to talk about. We should just call it a show and move on, right? Uh, okay, maybe Mueller, not. Mueller? Mueller, Mueller, that's right. So Mueller. shout out to 80s <laughs> movies. That's good. Uh, always comfortable with a uh, John Hughes reference in our in our midst. Um, yeah, the, the Mueller report has been handed down, and the shockwaves are still coming at us to some extent. So just off the top, what do you guys think? What's your general impression? Uh, it's been handed out. We've only seen a summary so far. Mm -hmm. What do you guys think, Jeff? Well, I mean, for me at least, it was not uh, unexpected. That, that's what we've expected all along. The surprise would have been if there would, would have been something in there. Uh, I mean, the idea, the narrative that was being pushed, that somehow the election was stolen from Hillary because of this collusion with the Russians, was absurd. I mean, we know why Hillary lost the election. She was uh, very much, even though Mr. Trump has his own problems, she was viewed as the, probably the most corrupt politician in a long time. And she also ceded uh, those Democratic areas such as Wisconsin, uh, Michigan, and Pennsylvania in a way where Mr. Trump's uh, message to those disaffected voters won the day. That's what won the election. Uh, so I was not surprised at the report uh, kind of putting that yeah. out. Uh, so that was my initial Bert, reaction. Bert, what do you think? I think uh, I'll probably agree with Professor Heyman very, very much on this, because I, I, I agree with this. I was not expecting anything. I had always thought that if there was something that was there, it would have, I mean, you just don't sit on on a big issue like that. Right. And so I'm not surprised at all in, in what happened. Yeah. One of the things that I keep, that I'm hearing right now is that there never should have been an investigation. Uh, there are people who are saying that this proves that the investigation should have never happen, that it was sort of hatched out of uh, some of what you were talking mm -hmm. about, the sort of thinking that there was a uh, conspiracy to, to, to defraud voters out of the election results. I, I'm not sure I can go there. I mean, it mm -hmm. doesn't, and in some ways it doesn't surprise me that the report doesn't have anything massive in it. But I think Mr. Trump deserved an investigation myself. I mean, I think that the... Uh, uh, Manafort, the presence of Manafort and such a close proximity of power is a big deal. I think their meetings with Russians, some of which were not documented and were then lied about, those are pretty big deals. Mr. Trump's business dealings with Russia, those are pretty big deals. And so to me, the investigation, I have no problem that it happened, mm -hmm. although I think that I'm going to be in the minority on that in some ways. What do you guys think? Uh, you, you'd be, I would not agree with you sure, on that. Fine. I mean, that, and I would be one on the other side. Yeah. I, I, I think that undoubtedly Mr. Trump has a lot of flaws and may, makes a lot of misjudgments. Uh, nevertheless, uh, under what basis would one say that we have to do an investigation? Mr. Manafort, uh, that, what, what had that had to do with sure. after the election? Yeah. What kind of, uh, you know, I, I, I was really most concerned. And in fact, I, w I was quite happy for one major reason. This, uh, the whole point of this exercise was to try to overturn the results of an election that people did not like. Uh, in my mind, I believe they came up with a uh, rationale to justify uh, a result they did not like. And, and for us to say that we're going to have an investigation to overturn the will of, of the American public, uh, it seems to me a much more dangerous proposition yeah. than any possible shenanigans Mr. Trump has in his business dealings with Russia, which or anybody else for that yeah. matter. Uh, I thought that was a would be more harmful to our republic. Uh, so I was uh, glad in that respect. So, so what specifically I, uh, yeah, would, sure. would you have? Uh, I think the biggest the biggest thing, even if the report seems to have substantiated, is that the Russians meddled in the election mm -hmm. at unprecedented levels. So you take that as a given. Every, mm -hmm. I think everyone acknowledges that. Then you add into it these other actions. And I think then you at least have the argument that maybe there was a relationship between those two sets of events. Now, I, I agree yeah. that the one, the presence mm -hmm. of the one doesn't admit the presence of the other. Sure. But the presence of the one and the presence of the other suggests that maybe a link should be investigated. Now, I'm looking at yeah. it more from a let's find out what happened. I wasn't interested gotcha. in delegitimizing the election. Gotcha. And I agree there were certainly people in the FBI and the Department of Justice mm -hmm who had pretty hurt feelings about the election, to say the least, yeah. and maybe had a political motivation behind all this, which I could understand. Um, but I don't, I don't see the necessarily the injustice of carrying out an, an investigation sure. itself. Sure. They could be abused, but I'm not even sure we know that, that Mueller abused his, his power mm -hmm. fundamentally. No. But. Well, one of the things I would just, uh, you know, all of us are subject, and I think this is good for us to talk about sure. is confirmation yeah. bias and, yeah. and what, 
w where we're predisposed to uh, look at certain facts because of our, our inclinations or otherwise. Yeah. You had deep suspicions of Mr. No Trump's Russia policy long before- No Mr. question. Because, no and many of us conservatives did. Why are you yep. treating Mr. Putin with, with kid gloves as a candidate? I, that's so, right. so I think no that doubt. there may have been some of no that doubt. that played into your willingness no to doubt. do that. So. His rhetoric toward NATO I and mean, all that stuff was just yeah. red flags. I agree with that. Well, you, you, may, you may want to accuse me of, uh, of bias also mm -hmm. because- I think that simply because of the way that uh, the Trump campaign was carried out, mm -hmm. it may have just been their lack of experience, mm -hmm. uh, their inability to know what they were doing. Uh, I mean, they evidently would take mm -hmm. knowledge anywhere trying to get an advantage. And this did appear yeah. that they were a little too close to you know to the Russians. I don't think it bothers me that it was uh, investigated either. Sure. Uh, it may have been investigated a little bit more thoroughly <laughs> and it took longer than I would have thought was appropriate. I also understand your point. Mm -hmm. I, I don't, uh, in, in, at least in a theoretical vacuum, I do. If we had had uh, professional sort of politicians running a campaign to begin with, uh, then I would be more inclined to agree with you. And like I say, I do understand what you're saying, but I think I, I side with, uh, with with Mark on this one uh, to a certain extent. It just seems to me this is unprecedented for it the is. FBI yeah. to investigate w based on the opposition research of the other party, a candidate, a major candidate running for office based on opposition research. That's deeply troubling to me. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so, yeah. so that, that and that's and, it. And there's no question yeah. that Trump presented those career Washington bureaucratically minded people mm -hmm. within the FBI and DOJ with the kind of public face that they had never yeah. encountered and many of them viscerally reacted against. Mm -hmm. And that's that's the root of some of this. I can't I can't deny that. Can't question. Well partially he was elected mm -hmm. on on dismantling their whole entire world. So I, yeah. I, I can understand that as well. Yeah. yeah. But even as a source of the investigation, it's not proper. No question about it. And, and my logic back on Russia, yeah. and it doesn't mean I'm right, I'm in maybe in the minority here in other places. Yeah. Is that the, the very, uh, it would have been different, for instance, if he would have had a secret relationship with Russia that we didn't know about. Yeah. But the things yeah. that you were concerned about, and, and I was concerned too, yeah. for a large degree, yeah. we all knew this was not hidden from the American public. And the American public voted on that policy. And many r Americans resonated, we need to stop being milked by Europe, NATO, et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, in a constitutional system we have, they're free to make that choice. So, so that's why I, I, I was happy to see this up. But. I'm willing to agree that I could be wrong. It may be my own <laughs> bias that is being confirmed. So, well, we're all biased. Yeah, I think we can yeah. at least we can at least establish that. Um, I I do kind of also feel for Mueller in this whole thing. I mean, that guy's really taken it uh, hard from the president and the president's partisans. Now he's getting ready to take it hard from the Democrats. I think mm -hmm. are going to accuse him of I don't know incompetence or worse. I don't know. Um, and by all accounts, and again, I could be wrong, by all accounts, this is a pretty decent, honorable person yeah. who's been really pulled through the mud for political purposes. And so I really, I feel for him. I mean, this is a, a military veteran, uh, a patriot by any indication. And what motivation do we all have to serve our country when service looks as ugly as this does? I feel bad for Mueller. Am well, I wrong in that? No, no, I think you should, but I think you should extend that to to other parts of the sure. Trump administration. When yeah. when anybody that runs for office is subject, I mean, like General Flynn. I mean, you can make the same case, and he's uh, yeah. In, anyway, uh, <laughs> he, he's going. To, he's not going to jail now. Nevertheless. Uh, He's a, a casualty of this by his own actions. By his own actions. By his own actions, his admitted. Own, yeah. uh, but the way that, that that went down and bringing his son into this, I, I always, when when the government does this and when the, and when Mueller does pre-dawn raids with, with, with almost Gestapo style, going through the doors with the, the assault weapons for people that he could have just knocked yeah, on at I agree. 3 a.m. I agree that. That yeah. deeply troubles me as well. So, I agree with that. So, I, can live, I, 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 I can live with that. What do you think, Bert? I uh, had forgotten that incident yeah. until you brought it up. I may have repressed it. I may have repressed it. I may have repressed it. I think that uh, as I would view uh, uh, Mueller, you know, it seems to me like he is a gentleman that is, in a, in a sense, in the middle, in a very mm -hmm. tumultuous mm -hmm. time in the in the country. And uh, the very fact that he can sit there, and I, I think he'll do okay. I, yeah. I think he'll just suck it up and go on and smile and realize that he, in his mind, is doing the right thing for the right reasons in an honorable way. And he's done the best that he ca that he could in a time when he's pulled from two sides by irrationality. Uh, and um, boy. 
So I, I think he's there. It's a good way to put it. Um, what do we think moving forward? So what does this do for Mr. Trump? Yeah, he he's used the word exonerate. I'm not sure it's quite that. <laughs> Uh, there's still some questions lingering. We haven't seen the report, so we really don't know what the evidence looks like. Uh, but what does this do for Mr. Trump moving forward? Is this, I've seen some people already speculate, and that's all it is, obviously, speculation. This makes him a lot more credible as a 2020 winner in some people's minds. Do you think that's too far? This unquestionably helps him. No doubt. How much is, is, is the question, yeah, however. Yeah. Uh, however, for the Trump uh, fans out there, uh, the Democrats... Um, have, have had their licks in, in this regard, in this investigation. The real danger in my mind was never this, it's in the, and many of commentators have known this is not unique to us on brands, is, is the danger that's represented to, to him because of his business interest that will be uh, uh, investigated by the, the pr prosecutor yep. in New York. Yep. That's the danger, and that's still out there. Yep. So, so uh, but, but the obstruction I never thought, nor, nor the collusion, was ever going to be the, uh, the issue that would get him, and those other questions still remain. But politically, if, none of, if nothing else happens with that, I believe that this strengthens him and especially to the extent that the Democrats keep pushing these investigations, which I don't see how they can not do yeah. given their I base. Don't. Right, that's right. I think They're that caught. helps Mr. Trump. Yeah. Well, I think he, I would say that even stronger. Yeah. Uh, I think this helps him. I don't, do not think that at this stage of the 2020 campaign, it is mistaken to say that this really helps him. And particularly if the Democrat, I mean, if they right now would say, oh, I'm sorry, you know, golly, we, we lost our, you know, they lost our head there and pull back and not press for uh, uh, impeachment. And I agree with you that what's going on with the, you know, having people meddling around and pushing on him uh, from the New York uh, court side is, 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 is the uh, biggest uh, problem that he's always had. But this makes the narrative spun by the left, again, just look ridiculous. And I would say he's very close to being completely exonerated. Now, again, him coming out and tweeting it strongly, you know, he was publicly obstructing something where there'd never been a crime. I, I just don't see how in the world you can push this uh, obstruction narrative very far at all. Uh, yeah, I mean, if, if he had been clandestine, trying to do things behind, looking like he was uh, you know, guilty of something and trying yeah. to cover it up, then I can see it. But I, 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 and I don't understand the nuances of obstruction from a, sure. from a legal standpoint, right. but right. just on the basic meaning of the word obstruction, right. it wasn't obstruction. I mean, he was being himself, you know, <laughs> which may be, have well, some he, other words he attached to He could be a walking it, obstruction. He I could mean, be. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the, I, you could still obstruct without having a crime involved if you're tampering with witnesses, if you're trying to short circuit an investigation, even if there's no crime, you're you still- you do that publicly? You could, you could. However, I would argue, I mean, Andy McCarthy, who writes quite a bit on National Review Online, he said, I think I agree with him, when the president uses his executive powers, it's not obstruction. He can fire yeah. people, he yes. can do it's all sorts right of things. That. Yeah. That's not obstruction of justice. Is it bad politics? Probably. Is it impeachable? That's arguable, but it's not obstruction of justice. And so I agree with that. But he still could have obstructed, but I don't think we know enough now to say that he really did, I think. Uh, last thing I want to talk about, I'm curious what you guys think. What does this make you think about the news media? Um, I don't get my news from cable television. I don't watch Fox. I don't watch CNN. I just don't watch it. It's not in my wheelhouse for news. But I get the sense a lot of people really think this is sort of the, uh, the nail in the coffin of sort of the mainstream media that's been obsessed over this collusion narrative for two years. Do you guys think that's too much, too much hyperbole, or what do you think? You know, I was uh, at the gym last night. I uh, go on Sunday night, and they have all the TVs, yep. which has all the mainline yep. news. Yep. And I'm not listening to it, but uh, I was watching the CNN the, at the bottom. Yeah. And they had the one line on the collusion getting letting Trump off. But on the obstruction, they had some line, and I could be missed because I don't remember exactly, but it was like this, not enough evidence to charge. <laughs> which the whole point of that little <laughs> blurb that sure. says not enough evidence to charge is, there's a lot there. He yeah. really did do it, but just not enough. So, right. so I don't right. think that they've given up. I mean, that's what I saw on CNN. Yes. I think uh, from my perspective, the uh, mainstream media had a nail in the coffin before the birth of Fox News. I did not think that they were legitimate or straight and haven't and do not pay attention to them. Uh, with that said, what I really think is that we need uh, to have uh, three uh, veins of, of news as much as possible, one left, one right, mm. and then one that tries to be objective to where we can sift through it easily. Because yeah. I think too many, right now, there's too much that is advocacy that we take 
for objective news. Yeah. And that's what I think we need to get rid of. That. Yeah. And if you do have some loony left wing or loony right wing commentators, I think that's fine as long as it's in context and you realize that they're advocating for a specific position. Sure. What I don't like is the mainstream media, again, effectively advocating for the left. Right. Uh, and, and so that, that's what I, I, I haven't trusted them for, for 20 years plus. So you mean commentary masquerading as news? That's yes. what you're really against. I, I yeah. think it's all yeah, entertainment I think it's now. I yeah, think yeah, it's yeah, entertainment. Yeah. It's not yeah. news, but we take it like it's news. Yeah. And I do not like the effect that it has on us. I think yeah. it's very divisive. Bert, just as just follow up real quick, where would you go for that in between factual source for news? Like right now? Take, yeah, where do you go for that kind of well, right now, down the middle? When news? I go for fact as much as anything, it's the Wall Street Journal. Yeah. I also go to the BBC. Yeah. So probably the first place I hear about anything is the BBC. Yeah. And they have a definitive slant to them too that they is do. not conservative. Yeah, they do. But it is not U.S. liberal. Right. I got you. So it's slightly slightly different. I also find some of the information on the New York Times, even though it has a uh, you know a certain reputation not to be bad. For instance, the uh, podcast today uh, that dealt with this was very rational and down the middle. Mm -hmm. When you know, some of the some of the people on there, you can see their bias easily, and you can see the bias in most people. But for instance, today both of the commentators were reporters that were trying to nail it down the middle. Yeah. And again, they, they, to me, were very rational with what they said. And in some ways, uh, yeah, just, I'll just leave it at that. Yeah. So I, I don't think all the New York Times is bad either. Yeah. Jeff, any follow-up there? Uh, now, in, in the interest of time, since we've already run out for our viewers, this has been a <laughs> wonderful week. Glad you joined us again. Mark, would you close us? Uh, thanks always for, for watching and for viewing. If you have a question, certainly send them to Matt and his marvelous mailbag. Thanks very much. Mm -hmm.